Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly and welcome to podcast 10.3 and looking at pressure effects on boiling point and SP is rarely used but sublimation points. And the reason why you don't see melting points added in here is because pressure affects gases and solid to liquid is gasless. So that would be it. Phase changes are at equilibrium. You should know that. We're going to look at phase diagrams, um, classifying different solids and properties of types of solids. Um, your book would actually be helpful so you can copy a few diagrams out of it. There are actually at least three that I see right now. Um, boiling points of water at various locations. So notice here, if you change the pressure, the boiling point of water is 70. If you go to the bottom of Death Valley, it be 100.3. So by changing the air pressure, you change the boiling point of water. So depending on different places, like you really want to boil water on the top of Mount Everest in Tibet, but what are you going to do? So, But it's weird to think of water boiling at other temperatures. Um, 7 degrees Celsius is still hot, so don't fool yourself. Why does pressure affect boiling point? Um, pressure is a column of air that smacks down the newly gaseous particles. So if something is trying to become a gas, so here I am, and I'm a little particle and I want to jump up here and become a gas, I'm free. What happens is there is a giant particle right up here that says you are not. So that's an arrow. So, and that happens. And the more giant evil particles there are, the less particles turn into gases. So that's the idea. So it requires more energy to break free. So if I've got these more of these particles up on top, it takes more energy to jump up and join them. So why does it take longer to cook macaroni and cheese in Colorado? There is a smaller column of air in whoops, Colorado. So now there's a smaller column of air in Colorado. That means the boiling point is lower. And if the boiling point is lower, so you are cooking your mac and cheese at a lower temperature. So imagine if you're making your Christmas goose, because I'm sure that's what everybody eats. So if you're cooking your Christmas goose and the directions say to cook it for one hour at 500 degrees, but because I live in Indiana, I only have fire and a bucket, um, I can only cook it at 300 degrees. Well, if I can only cook it at 300 degrees, can I still cook my Christmas goose? Sure, I can still cook my Christmas goose. I just would cook it for longer than an hour. That's it. And what two ways can I make water boil? One is increase the temperature. The other one is decrease the pressure. If there are no big, mean, nasty guys up here, you can just jump up and leave. Normal boiling point and melting points. The word normal means it's at one atmosphere. So boiling point at one atmosphere, melting point at one atmosphere. Yeah, that's easy. At boiling point or melting point, equilibrium exists. What temperature does water freeze? Zero degrees Celsius. At what temperature does water melt? Zero degrees Celsius. Wait a minute. Does it depend on what it was or what goes through these things? At zero degrees Celsius, it is changing into um, ice and it's changing into water. So you have to add extra energy to control the shift. So if you want to melt ice, you have to get it to zero and then add extra heat. So at that temperature, it's at equilibrium. Phase diagrams. Graph temperature on x-axis and pressure on y. Er, er, temperature, pressure. Draw it. Show a normal boiling point. Normal boiling point. What? I think I did that wrong. I did do that wrong. Pressure on y and temperature on the x. Normal boiling point would be one atmosphere. Um, a critical point, any hotter than it has to be a gas, and a triple point. So here we go. Woo, here's my one atmosphere, right? So that's my normal. Oops, I wanted to make that look like this. Oh, can I get rid of this? Probably not. Yeah, not bad for pretending it's an eraser. Okay, so uh, the critical point is this point right here, and really it's a line. If you're any hotter than that point, you have to be a gas. So this is my gas. Notice the lowest pressures are gases. I'm sorry. Yeah, the lowest pressures are gases. The highest temperatures are also gases. The coldest temperatures would be a solid. Oh, that makes sense. And then liquids are what is left over. Okay. Liquid. And 
Oops. It, you know what I mean. I'll just put an L now. So anywhere along these points, this is the solid to liquid line. So th those coordinates would be the melting point. This would be the liquid to gas. That would be the boiling point. And solid to gas would be the sublimation point. You should be able to do that. Obviously, this is wrong. Graph pressure on x and temperature on y. All right, the water is different from a typical substance. If you notice the other triple point that I had, this line right here had a positive slope. Water is the only thing that I know of that has a negative slope. I guess that's too hard to see. That has a negative slope. And this has an important impact. This means that if you crush ice, increase the pressure, it'll turn to a liquid. So you can take ice and squeeze it and make it melt. And this happens if you're the snow shoveler in the uh, family and you have to shovel where the footprints or tire tracks are. That's so much harder because what happens is when the car drives over it or a person walks on it, the solid melts and once it melts then and it doesn't have that pressure anymore, it freezes and it's way harder to shovel or chip off ice than it is to shovel snow. Don't ask me to between snow and ice. It's weird. Okay, so s water has this backwards um, solid to liquid melting point. All right, classification of solids. Know this. This has been an AP test question um, like five times. Okay, and it hasn't been on it for a while. So we've got different kinds of solids. We have metals. We have network covalents, um, and this says. Components that occupy lattice points, nonmetal atoms, and they're usually carbons or silicons. And this is 10.3 in your book. Um, group 8A atoms. Oh, sorry. I looked the wrong one. Oh, okay. So group 8A, these are the noble gases, which they don't really form solids very often. Um, molecular solids are discrete molecules, supposed to be like ice. Ionic solid has ions. So the particles, they're metal atoms, not ions. A network like diamond atoms, group 8A atoms, or molecules because 8A, oh no, they're all, they're all atoms, they're not molecules, pardon me, they're not diatomic. And then molecular solids are discrete molecules, ionic solids are ions. They're bonding, delocalized covalent, that is the electron C, that is the fancy word for the electron C. You should use delocalized covalent. Why is it covalent? Shared. Um, network is directional covalent, leading to giant molecules like diamond. Um, group 8A, they're just molecules, London dispersion force is sad. Um, if you have molecules, dipole, dipole, and or London dispersion forces, and shame on this, they did not include H bonding. The reason why they didn't include H bonding is H bonding is really super dipole, dipole. And ionic solids includes ionic. So notice this is an intramolecular force. This is an intramolecular force. This is an intramolecular force, and those are the strongest. So we should know a good example of the types of solids. Network covalents, we should think diamonds. And this lattice points, again, it showed up. I'm just putting it here again in case I guess I could, didn't think you could read that one before. So molecular would be molecules. Um, metal nuclei or atoms. Either one is fine. I actually like nuclei better myself. And then for the types of bonds, this is just written a little bit better again um, to go through those different types of things. Here's the one that... This is how to determine what it is in lab. So if you have a network covalent thing, remember, this is diamond, for example. They're hard, very high melting point. They're an insulator, and they never conduct electricity because there aren't any ions that can flow. There aren't any ions in it. Ionic. It's hard, again, really strong bonds. High melting point, really strong bonds. Insulator, because the electrons can't flow. Now, it's an insulator. Uh, no, that's fine. Um, conducts as a liquid only, because remember, it's made out of ions, and that's the only time they can flow. So the only time they can flow is as a liquid. Metallic has a range of hardness. Isn't that a nothing statement? Melting point varies. There's a bunch of nothing. And it conducts as a liquid or gas, so this is how you can tell that it's a metallic bond. It will, it's the only one that conducts as a liquid. Nice, and a gas. Darn it. Liquid or a solid. It's the only one that will conduct as a solid. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Metals, metallic bonds conduct as solids or liquids. And only metallic bonds conduct as solids. Molecular soft. Um, low melting point, weak bonds, insulator.
again, doesn't have the ions to flow. And then the examples. If you think of this, I think it just helps you figure these things out a whole lot. Dry ice um, is the stuff they use to ship food, like if you're getting, uh, uh, what do you call that, Oklahoma steaks for Christmas or something like that. Review. Bell's going to ring here in a second for me. Pressure changes the boiling point and the sublimation point. Equilibrium exists during phase changes. Water's phase diagram slopes backward, meaning it has a negative slope meaning that ice is less dense than liquid water. The triple point is at equilibrium. The critical point is really a line because any higher than that temperature, it, it's straight up. Know the solid types, lattice points, and how to differentiate in lab. Huge question. Have a good one.